We always celebrate many heroes of our country, whether in sports, the arts, or even political heroes who have left this world. While this is a great exercise to help in shaping the society's character and develop future leaders in those sectors, we have been neglecting heroes who have walked among us. It has always troubled me how we have always celebrated people who have never met us. But once we lay our beloved ones to rest, we forget them and the impact they have had on us and the lessons they have left us. This lecture series is my way of correcting that. Hello, my name is Sipo Mnyage and I want to talk to you about Pauline Kosi as part of the Impact Center lecture series to celebrate the lives of those who walked with us and continue the legacies that they were pushing. When I heard about Pauline's death, I paused and I shed a tear. Thousands of memories gushed my mind. I was filled with a lot of I wish I had, I should have, I could have. I realized that sometimes we procrastinate to follow what our hearts urge us to do until it's late. Polly and I had a number of interactions that were always centered on music, Christ, and empowering others. When this idea came of honoring those who walked among us, Polly's name was the first that came to my heart. Because I know when he passed on, I vowed in my heart to do something to pay tribute to him. I'm humbled to do this little gesture in tribute to a life that affected many lives positively. Whenever we pay tribute to a person, we are practically drafting a summary of our perceptions, which are a product of our interactions with them. I can only speak about what I've experienced living and interacting with Polly. Those interactions formed whatever picture I carry with me and explains the effect he has had on many who testify of a great life that he lived. I met Polly through a youth movement called the Heavenly Youth Christian Movement. He was a humble soul who respected others without preference. He was not one whose reverence for others was influenced by status. I've watched him interact with others and I've seen a man who treated all people equally with respect. When I first met him, I was the president of the Heavenly Youth Christian Movement and had to visit branches as my duty. In Duduza, he was my contact person and connected me to many people who would be very influential in the success of the work we were leading. He came from a grounded family his demeanor was mirrored in his mother, a wonderful soul, who has also departed to be with the Lord. God loved him, music loved him, a worshiper. God gave me the grace to have a number of conversations with Polly's mother, and from such I managed to tell the foundation of Polly's stature, a grounded family with a mother who was God-fearing. There is an event 
in my life that demonstrates the level of respect I had for Tony. He was hosting an event in Tutuza and invited me to come and share the word of encouragement. This was, this was very early in my youth. I had no money to take a taxi to Tutuza from Guatemala, but I wouldn't dare miss this opportunity to grace Tony's event. I hated to disappoint him. When I couldn't find anyone to help me with money, I decided to walk. It was a strange decision, as Tutuza was far from Guatemala on foot. I got on the road determined to be in Tutuza to make my presentation and hear all his music. It was only after walking about 15 kilometers that a good Samaritan gave me a lift and dropped me at the venue. I arrived there tired, but I served with distinction. This demonstrates the level of respect I had for him. A respect, I must say, was requited because he equally respected me. Another event that really had a lasting impact on me when, when the, was when there was a revival in a church they were attending and I was asked to come and preach. In one of the days I wasn't preaching, I assisted in the music team. My keyboard skills were at their earliest and most amateur. It was not a performance I'd be proud to display, especially in the presence of a famous keyboardist called Colin Gossi. He asked me to play the second keys and guided me through the play and helped me have confidence in myself and improved my playing greatly. This is the reason I understand when they called him a university. He was fond of gathering young men, teaching them music. Many have gone on to carve music path for themselves and his influence they don't cease to celebrate. I've seen many musicians openly show disdain for others who are not at their level. I've seen keyboardists refuse to play because the keyboardist uses a, the keyboardist uses a transposer. Tolly wasn't like that. When he realized that you were still learning, he used the opportunity to help you get better. People got better when they interacted with him. I say this from personal experience. Even though he had access to the best, the top musicians of the land and could play any song he wanted, he was passionate about hymns. This passion, I believe, he got from his family days, devotions, and singing sessions. This is a passion we shared, even to this day. I recall a day I was in Tutuza and we met by accident. We stopped our cars and stood by the roadside discussing many things, including a project we had been planning for years of resuscitating hymns. That conversation could have lasted over two hours, demonstrating both passion for the subject and an intellectually spiritual connection we had. I'm sure this wasn't only with me, as he was a man of ideas, open to conversations. One of the collaborations we had was at the Baptist Church in Pretoria where we conducted a workshop on hymns. He played hymns and I preached, spoke to the hymns. The phrase, the heart and art of worship made sense for me there. We had committed to do more of this, but we never got to. But recently I got an honor of being invited by Dr. Koto to, to join a, a radio program, a radio station, an online channel called SKM Radio. It is there that I came up with a program called Speaking in Psalms and Hymns. This I, I did at the back of my mind with this project we did with Colin. He was a great man. I shared earlier with you how much I didn't want to disappoint him whenever he called on me. And I want to say, he was to become later my savior in many instances. Whenever I hosted events, Colin would avail himself, even at a short notice, to help make my event a success. He was never one whose support was dependent on my budget. When I had a budget, he would come. 
when I had no budget, he would still come. And in both instances, his performance would be high quality and professional. I must also add, Oli was able to work with the resources that we had. And it is rare to find people with the same spirit, willing to lower your expectation, but still able to dish out top quality. I learned so much from him. Today, I pay tribute to Colin Kosi. His life is a canvas of three things. One, humility. He was a humble man. Even though he had traveled the world and graced top stages, he was willing to come and minister to even small places, the church I lead, the residence church, on three occasions, bringing his family and band. He would tap on his resources to help others succeed in their projects. What a man. The second thing about him, he was excellent. He spent thousands of hours polishing his keyboard and synthesizer skills. This opened doors for him. At length, at the creme de la creme that he has worked with, will testify as to the level of his skill. He never reached a point where he thought he had arrived. For him, there was still much land to be won. Excellence was his motto as far as work was concerned. The third one is service. The fact that his life was called a university is evidence of his passion for serving others. He had the patience of an able educator, guiding many to bettering their lives. He was passionate about what he was doing. This is what some people have said about him. Wandi Lengosi, his sister and one of the most talented vocalists Tutuza has produced. She said, what, what a blessing it is to know that your work is still recognized way after you're gone. You left your heart and sweat on the ground. What a, what a, what a, what a, what a tribute. Lungile Maduna, an international drama, says, this was no ordinary man. And Sipogazi Mahangana um, says he was a humble person with a good attitude towards people. I wish you could duplicate his character and make many calls. In Isizulu, they say, Zingunwa Amakanda Ziegwe. May Koli's spirit live long and his legacy continue to birth others like him.